Am I in my Dear Reader era? Maybe. Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie. If you are new here, welcome. If you are not, welcome back. That's not usually my intro, but we're rolling with it. Today, I have a little bit of a chatty video. I hesitate to call it advice because I tend to stay away from giving advice because I don't think I'm particularly good at it. And everyone is an individual, especially within a subjective field like writing and authoring and doing all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, take everything that I say as usual with a grain of salt. But I have been querying for a year and a half now, a year and five months, almost a year and a half, it'll be a year and a half next month. And when I started this journey, I was vlogging. I still have a bunch of vlog clips that maybe one day we'll see the light of day, but much like Lindsay, we're not gonna show them off until there's something to say about it. However, when I started out my journey, I made a note in my phone that basically has all of my things that I think about, epiphanies, advice, things that I've thought about, things that have helped me learn, things that I think other people should know perhaps, which is what this video is. I will not call it advice because again, I'm not an advice giver, but I hope some of these things resonate with you. If you're in the query trenches, if you're about to get into the query trenches, if you've just come out of the query trenches, I am with you. They are truly called trenches for a reason. I'm down here in the dirt like a dog, like, getting those queries out and it's fucking difficult sometimes. I will say as a general thing, if you come to this video looking for advice on how to query or how to query effectively or what is a query, any kind of thing like that, that's not where this is. There's a bunch of other people on the, the internet in general, also on AuthorTube. I know Alexa Dunn has a ton of great querying content where you can go and listen and actually learn how to put together a query package, what should be in a query, what you look for in an agent, what you look for in a query, those kinds of things. This is more generalized like life advice that I have found helpful or things that I've thought about and realized that I think other people, maybe if you're in the query trenches, maybe it'll make you feel better or maybe it'll give you a different perspective. That's what this is. I'm not gonna be going through like, this is how you make a query. This is how you find agents. That's not really my area to do that. If people really would like me to talk about it, I can, but uh, let me know down below. Also, before we get started, if there's any questions that you have after the end of this video, they're like, I want to know how you feel about X, Y, and Z. Let me know, leave them down below and I'll maybe make a part two full of your questions. But this is generally my thoughts, feelings, opinions, ramblings, odes about querying. Maybe not odes because I'm not querying spend a time, but we'll get into it. The first thing that I wrote down, which was after I got my first proper rejection on The Wrath Gang, I wrote, which was rejections hurt. Anyone that tells you otherwise is fucking lying to you. However, what I have realized over time is that they might always hurt. Some will hurt more than others. I've definitely had experiences where I've gotten a rejection from someone who I was really hopeful for, someone who had asked for a request and that rejection hurt really fucking bad. It made me feel like my chest had caved in and talk about this a little bit on Instagram. What I've kind of learned is live with that feeling for a little while. Think about it as a confirmation that you still really want this and this is still a dream that you wish to pursue and live with that feeling and get used to it because it's gonna be your best friend. At the end of the day though, you're not owed anything. Yes, you put in the work. Yes, you might have the greatest book in the world. Yes, there might be a place in the market for you. Yes, there might be people screaming about your book. You're still not owed anything from anyone. Just because something took a lot of time does not necessarily mean that you are owed success. However, that doesn't mean that you don't get the right to feel angry about it or upset about it. A lot of times agents do not give personalized feedback. That is my experience from the last year and a half. I have gotten one rejection with personalized feedback. And that was the most helpful. It was less of a rejection in that in that moment and more of a, okay, if this is like a revise and resubmit essentially. But there's a lot of them where they're just like, sorry, it's not for me, best of luck to you. And like, you are allowed to feel angry about that. Feel your feels about that. Do not take it out on the agent or on Twitter. You are not owed a fucking thing in this universe. This one specifically came about because I have query tracker and I have the pro version so I can look at the comments. I don't know if you have, if you have the non pro version, I don't know if you can look at comments, but I found this one underneath an agents where they had been rejected and I'm not putting which agent this is under or the username that this came from. There is no hate to this person. I do not know them, but I think this really sums up the kind of entitlement I think a lot of people have. And this is kind of what I would ca caution people against. This person says, I have been published numerous times for nonfiction writing, but this is my first 
first experience dealing with agents when I submitted a work of fiction. There is a world of difference. Nonfiction publishers act in a much more professional manner. You can tell they read the material and they either tell you it's not for them or accept it. Lines of communication are established. Fiction, which seems to require an agent, I don't know why, act in the most unprofessional way possible. They don't let people know their personal emails and because they don't often reply, you have no idea whether they read the submission or not. Is this because there is so much dross being sent to them? If that were the case, surely they can simply look at a few pages of the publication and send a note saying it's been rejected. Instead, there's a vacuum where you have no idea whether the email had been lost or read or whether a technical malfunction has prevented the world's next best manuscript from being published. But above all, what is missing is common civility. I send you an email, you must respond. You don't have to write an awful lot, but general politeness dictates that some response should be provided. Now there's a lot to unpack here and it's kind of what inspired this entire video was seeing this and seeing this kind of entitlement. And to some extent, this person does make some good claims such as you don't know if they have even read the thing, if there's been a technical malfunction, if there's something wrong on like a level of that. Publishing doesn't owe you jack shit is essentially the TLDR of what I wanna say about this specific thing. People don't owe you their personal emails. They don't owe you a response. They don't owe you the time of day of looking at your stuff. There's a reason you write a query. I have looked at these agents. I have can look at the timeline of how many queries they're sent. And not only do they have to look at queries on their own time and spend their own time, cause they're not making money off of looking at your queries. Because if you have to pay an agent to look at your stuff, that's a agent. do not engage with them. They're not getting paid for this. They're looking for something that's gonna be marketable, that they can sell, that they really love, that they wanna work on, that they can publish with you and try to find someone who will want to buy your work so that they also can make money because this is a business first and foremost. If you didn't know, it's a business. I do wish that agents were able to respond to everyone and give everyone a personalized feedback. But as someone who also beta reads and who does read a lot of stuff, I don't review every book I've read. I don't write something for it. I don't say, oh, I didn't like this. There's such entitlement in the idea that you are owed something and you are not owed anything, which is the general experience, I think, of what you, you will learn eventually and what maybe this person needs to learn. The whole, I send you an email, you must respond is bullshit. It sucks for the person who you sent, who sent the email. Like I, I've sent many a query that I've never heard back from and I don't expect to now. I'm not owed a response from an agent. And because of that, I'm, ha I'm much happier, I think, in life. This person's really upset and angry. And I understand writing is a very personal experience. However, when you're going into the querying trenches, you have to be ready for the absolute brutality of the fact that this is a business. This is no longer just creative enterprising. This is a business and they have to use their time wisely because not only do agents look at queries to find their next agent, they also have to deal with their own clients. And the clients oftentimes take more precedent over you. You aren't owned anything. Just just have that mindset. You're not owed anything. You're worth in a response. Don't let it determine your self-worth because you are worth a response. There will be agents who do respond, but you're not owed that. And you have to be kind of strong internally <laughs> to deal with the fact that there are just some agents who aren't gonna respond. A lot of the time, that's not on you. That's just the fact that they just don't have time or it's gonna take a while to get to something. And there's this great thing that you can do called nudging where you will email an, an agent being like, hey, I saw on Twitter this, this, and this that you said you were gonna be getting into it. I just wanna know where I am like lining up and whatever. You can look up how to nudge somewhere else. But this really just, it grinded my gears for the agent where this was put at. And granted, it's on Query Tracker, which is for querying authors and not, and not agents. So like, hopefully the agent isn't looking at that. It's kind of like reader review safe, but the entitlement in this just makes me a little bit upsetty. So it's kind of what spiraled this whole thing of me being like, what have I learned in querying that I can pass on to people? That is my biggest lesson is, and just in life in general, don't be entitled. Because of that, my biggest tip, if you're gonna take a tip out of this, is get a writing group get a support system. This process is fucking brutal. Fucking brutal. I had to say it again because it's that poignant. You are really going to need it. If you are really scared about querying, join a community, watch author tube videos, even just the community that comes from watching someone else go through the querying journey. I love Lindsay Puckett's querying journey videos. Highly recommend those. It really feels like you're there with her and you can kind of go through some of the emotions and kind of feel how the process works. Go on TikTok, go on Instagram, find other querying authors and try to make connections. Join a discord. Ours is pretty great. Find friends, local friends, anyone. Just there's a ton of websites, NaNoWriMo, a couple, a bunch of other ones. If you just, you can find support systems somewhere else. And this will really help you, I think in the long run of just having a support system where you can be angry a little bit and feel entitled, but also at the same time, they'll be there for you as you pick yourself back up and send out more queries. The truth of it is you may never feel ready to query though. Do it anyway. Do make your book as good as it can be, but do query anyway. You're gonna look at your book and you'll be like, it's not ready. It's not there. I can't do it. I'm not emotionally prepared. Do it 
Anyway, I was not emotionally prepared or ready to send out queries on the Wrath King. I did anyway, and I learned a lot. I wouldn't be where I'm at now, where at querying my second book, if I hadn't done it earlier. If I hadn't gone through this kind of like, you know, wrecking ball of my own hopes and dreams of being a unicorn, because I'm not. At the six month mark, you may be going gung-ho on your queries. Take a step back, reevaluate your strategy, reread your query, reread your book, your pages, your synopsis, synopsis, your synopsis, your comp titles, all of those. Think about it from the outside's perspective, edit it, rewrite it, do it again, cut things that you previously had in it, rewrite it, do all of the things you can do. And while you're doing this, think about why you want this. Think about, have you gotten any new information that could help you query better and more effectively? <laughs> Look at how fast you're getting rejections. Look at how many maybe piles you're sitting on. Look at how many requests you've gotten, partial or fulls. Look at the strategy that you're at and take a really long look at it from a meta perspective and be like, what could I be doing better? What can I do differently? Rewrite your query try again. Keep an eye on the recent deals in the publishing sphere. Doesn't matter if it's from an agent you want or not, keep an eye out on it. Look at trends. Who is selling books? What are those books about? How many deals? What publishers are publishing them? See if you could wriggle into those inboxes because maybe they've sold something that's similar to what you've written and they might like it. This also gives you a good idea of which agents are selling books and that's important because you actually, you don't just want an agent you want a book deal. If you don't have a group or people you want to look over your query, think about investing some money into a query critiquer. They're not very much money. You can find cheaper ones. I don't know how well they're gonna be doing, but you can find a cheaper one. There are a lot of them on Twitter who you can employ their services and they will read your query with a fresh, critiqueful eye. They're not obliged to give you bullshit because you're literally paying them to give you a critique. Could be worth the money if you have no one else in your life who has the experience or the knowledge or the know-how or anyone who, you don't have anyone to look over your query for you. It might actually be a good use of money if you can do it, putting it out there. There's a lot of them on Twitter. I wouldn't maybe go with Fiverr, but what do I know? When you start querying, when you start thinking about querying, when you are even within sniffing distance of diving into those trenches, into the mud, read blurbs, backs of books, actual queries, Google successful queries and read them and absorb them and pick them apart. Be like, what are they doing in this? That is good, that got them a book deal besides just the premise. Because a lot of the time you have to like, what, what, what did they do to sell this book? Get an idea of how they distribute the information, how it flows, what is even going on with it. My best advice is to be specific. Don't beat around the bush. Go on your shelves, pick a book that's in the same genre, read the back, read the front flap, find out what they did and emulate it. There is a formula and you can customize it to your own voice and I recommend doing that. But find the formula and fucking stick to it. I might be kind of controversial with this next advice. Sometimes quitting is okay. Sometimes there is a virtue in quitting. If the query trenches are truly dragging you to hell and back and it's becoming detrimental to your physical, mental, spiritual health, take a break and stop. Stop sending queries. Stop looking at query tracker. Sometimes quitting is the strongest thing that we can do because sometimes when you quit and you take a little time to, to wallow in it, to mope, I know I did, you'll sometimes maybe find the next book that you can query and you might find a new project and maybe this project isn't it. Maybe this project's not right yet. I always talk about this example. We always say that sometimes books are Ninth House. Ninth House by Lee Bardugo, which is right there. She is the best-selling author of the Grishaverse series, uh, Shadow and Bone, Six of Crows, very popular. Those were the first books that she sold. However, I believe her first book she actually wrote and tried to query was Ninth House and nobody wanted it. Sometimes we can put books on the shelf, but we can just as easily take them off. And just because you've sunk a lot of time into it, if it is driving you crazy, if it is giving you anxiety, if it is tearing you apart, sometimes you need to quit. And that's okay. On the opposite side of that, it's a very fine line to walk. Sometimes believing beyond hope is important, is better. Sometimes you have to believe beyond all statistics, all logic that you will make it. Sometimes you have to believe beyond hope and faith. Sometimes you have to be kind to yourself and believe and say to myself, I'm the shit, I'm gonna get that fucking agent. I'm gonna get that fucking book deal. Believe, because no one else is. And even if people do, what good is their, what good is their belief if you don't believe it? So believe in yourself, believe that you'll make it. Because if not this one, then the next one or the next one, you're a writer. You're doing this for a reason. Think about that reason. Why are you trying to get your stories out there? What is so important about your story? And hold on to that. Hold on to that. Why is this important to you? So always believe. But sometimes, even if you believe in yourself and even if you believe in your book, sometimes you have to quit in order to su succeed. I know that seems like an oxymoron, but it is true. Sometimes you have to quit something that you love, a book you love, a story you love, an idea you love, something you want to work so badly, and you have to quit it for a little bit in order for it to. And that, my friends, is all the epiphanies, all of the advice, 
that I have for you today. Those are all the things that I've been thinking about personally. These are things that I have done, that I have thought about, that I have written down clearly in the dead of night when I'm just worrying my ass off about whether this is gonna work out for me. Good luck, my friends, if you're in the querying trenches. Again, let me know your questions down below if you're like struggling with something and I'll maybe try to help you, give you a little pep talk. I don't think this is supposed to be a pep talk. These are just things that were in my mind. And I said, you know what? I'm going to give my thoughts unabashed, unedited, unscripted. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you subscribe to see more of my rambling face. Make sure you give the video a like if you did enjoy it. It lets me know you enjoy this kind of content. If you hated it, dislike it. It's still engagement. Good luck in your career journey. Good luck in your writing journey. My camera keeps shutting off, which I think is a sign that I've been talking too much. So I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.